Welcome Macaulay students and alums to this five-part video series on 50 tips to get your dream job. I'm Giannina Christman, Associate Director of Career Development at Macaulay Honors College. I would like to give a special thanks to the Career Development Advisory Council's Parents Committee members that put all this together. They have extensive experience in hiring people, several hundred collectively, over the past several years. They have a good sense of what works in hiring. I recommend you watch all the videos, practice what you can, and visit the Macaulay Career Development's website that contains career blogs and guides that detail different aspects of career development. Whenever you're thinking of internships or jobs, please think of contacting the career development team. We have knowledge in all aspects of getting, finding, and negotiating jobs that can help you along your path. We can also give you feedback on your resume and cover letters and provide mock interviews to prepare you for the job search. Best wishes for a wonderful career. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Scott Mesh, a CEO of Los Ninos Services. And over the years, I've hired over 500 people, and I'm delighted to share with you today a number of tips that will help you get your dream job. Great, so let's just dive right into 50 tips to get your dream job. Some overall points to start off. You know that the job market is very competitive. So the key here is to be prepared. Do your homework. The more you prepare, the better your chances are going to be to score. So getting a dream job is kind of like getting an A. Anybody got an A before? Yes, I'm sure that you have. Exactly. So you got to do your homework. Find out what the professor wants. Do that and you'll get an A. So getting a dream job, find out what the company wants, give that to them, and you're going to be likely to be hired. So point number three, remember that everything can be Googled. So there is no reason not to be prepared. The career services is fantastic. They have tremendous resources, and I'm going to encourage you to take advantage of all the resources that they have. They can help you prep the interview. They can practice with you. There are about 14 online career guides on the Macaulay website alone. Each guide has between 20 to like 100 pages. So uh, make use of these. Do your homework once again. So let's talk about the resume and cover letter. Um, absolutely do a grammar and a spell check and have the career services folks review everything. Now, in, our, in the experience of recruiters, only 18% of the time they believe that a cover letter is requested. So people are not gonna ask for cover letters too much, but if they do ask, absolutely do it and do it well. So anything you do, do it well, Make sure that it's spell check and so on. Uh, the recruiters expect pretty much a flawless resume and there's no reason not to do so. So what about the company? When you come across a company that looks of interest, absolutely go to the company website. I can't tell you how many times I've interviewed folks and one of my first questions is, have you been to our website? They're like, oh yeah. And then I ask, oh, what did you think of it? And they start going, uh, uh, well, it looks all right. And it was apparent that they didn't look at it really at all. In, in our case, in our company said, oh, yeah, you work with young kids. Okay, anything else you noticed? And so if you review the website, you will learn a lot of useful information. And also you can, you can share with the interviewer any information that you reviewed, and that will help them see that you've taken the time to look at the, their company, that you're serious, and that you're interested. There's other websites which review companies, such as Glassdoor and Indeed. I would encourage you to definitely check those out. Look for the ratings of a company, and in addition, look at the comments. 
look at the comments about the company overall, and keep in mind, uh, some people are going to love the company, some people are not. So there's a range of folks that will review. Um, usually the reviews are out of like a five. You can, you can rate a company. So to have companies that are in the fours is, is very, very difficult. The absolute top companies have 4.0, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. So it will be common to have many, many companies in the threes. And then uh, I would say if the rating is a lot lower than that, um, that, that could be a red flag. Also notice how many people have reviewed a company. If two people have reviewed it or five people, it doesn't mean that much. But if you have 20, 50 or more, then you know that those ratings are probably going to give you a more accurate uh, perspective. The other thing that I encourage you to do is to Google the company, meaning news on the company, uh, leadership, any issues that they might be having. And you can use this in the interview. Um, you may wish to ask them about something that's happening in the news, either good or maybe not so good. So let me pause right now and just see if there are questions on anything so far. You had mentioned before um, things that people should be weary of or things that they should do ahead of time to make them look good for an employer. But what are um, some of the biggest red flags that you face or you've seen when you're interviewing people other than, you know, not checking out the website? That That's a great question. Well, not checking out the website is one detail and it's not the end of the world. Uh, however, it's one indication the person who is either not interested maybe in your company uh, or perhaps they're not prepared in general. So I'm looking for someone who is a go-getter, someone who uh, can research things and is prepared in general. So other red flags, um, the way someone dresses the way they interact with you. Uh, there's a number of them that we're going to go through uh, coming up in terms of the interview itself. Um, so, so things that would indicate that they're not interested or they're not able to work in the way that we want to work. So in our company, we look for folks that are going to do really great, caring work with families. So if someone is very casual or if they roll their eyes, I remember several people that were in a group interview and they kind of rolled their eyes like they were annoyed. That is not a good sign, especially when you're trying to be your best during an interview. So great question. Other questions so far? Okay. I can keep going. Was there a question there? Uh, you might be covering this a little later on, but what do you, you know, what do you do if you don't know who your interviewer is going to be? And I guess specifically from like a cover letter standpoint, you know, addressing, um, addressing a cover letter or, you know, email to someone who. Ab absolutely. You know. So, so that's a great question. So when you don't know who your interviewer is, it's okay to say, um, dear hiring manager, it's fine. If you were able to figure out um, who, the, who the interviewer is, then you can use that, that person's name. And also, you can Google that person. You can go to LinkedIn to learn a little bit about them. Uh, and what I would, I would say as a general rule, is you want to approach the interview process as a professional process. So you're not trying to be somebody's best friend. You know, you don't want to talk about, uh, you know, the favorite wine that they listed, uh, you know, somewhere you were able to catch on the internet or something. You want to keep it professional. So there is a purpose to the interview process. Good question. Other questions? Okay, we'll keep going. So um, interview practice, this is really, really crucial. 
And the most helpful thing I think you can do in preparing for the interview is to practice. So role play in a mock interview. Who are you going to do this with? Somebody who can give you good, helpful, and honest feedback. So a career counselor, that would be fantastic. Also a good friend, a colleague, a mentor, uh, perhaps a professor if you're close enough and someone was uh, willing to spend the time to do this with you. And basically, the reason to do this is to learn how you come across uh, the positives and especially the nervous behaviors any negatives because you want to try to avoid those if you can. Now, keep in mind that recruiters know that people are nervous. It's normal. It's natural. You don't have to be cool, calm, and collected. Um, you just want to try to accent the positive as much as possible. So video is your best teacher. This is what I recommend. You can even just videotape yourself. You don't have to role play with another person if you don't have one. And even if you role play with another person, videotape yourself because I've never found a better teacher. You look at yourself and you can see exactly the things that you do well and things that you want to improve upon. Um, definitely be careful about the nonverbals about the eye contact, to show that you're interested, lean in slightly. Don't lean back. Don't slouch. You know, don't, don't take it easy. And think about smiling um, to convey that you're interested and you're upbeat and positive. If you're very nervous, sometimes you might not smile because you're so nervous. So keep that in mind. Another tip is to just summarize what someone said to make sure that they understand that you heard them and that you're listening closely. Uh, and one of the great tips that I love is using an interviewer's name. When you come in, if you're the kind of person who, like me, sometimes doesn't remember the person's name, try to use their name immediately, try to use it again, soon after, and then use their name every 15 minutes. Write it down if you need to. Maybe they will give you their card and say, um, thank you, Maya, and use the, use their name. That That's great. You can take notes. It's not a problem. Taking notes conveys that you're taking things seriously and that you're interested. And then you may wish to follow up on this in the interview or after. How about questions on this so far? I guess my first one would be, what are the worst interview mistakes that you've seen? And also what are the best characteristics in um, the people that you've hired and you've had them for years and that worked out really well? Great question. So in terms of worst mistakes, uh, I would say in a way, maybe it's a mistake, but in another way, maybe it's not a mistake. And what I mean to say is that the best advice in an interview is to be yourself. And when you, when you hear be yourself, it doesn't mean be all of yourself. It doesn't mean to be your personal self. It means to be your best self. So remember, it's a professional situation. And everything that you do could make a difference. So, for example, uh, I've had people in terms of mistakes that make some, uh, you know, bad comment to the receptionist. And then the receptionist then follows up and shares that with the people who are interviewing the candidates. So, you know, anything that happens in the process of the interview, it, it adds up. And it's very important because people can say anything about you and you can have whatever you, you want on your resume. Um, however, the interview behavior, starting from the application itself, uh, going through to a phone screen or, you know, uh, scheduling, all of this adds up. So in terms of mistakes, um, for me, we hire people who are low maintenance. 
So someone who is high maintenance and they're making a big deal and a big problem about hiring, about, uh, sorry, about uh, scheduling, uh, that kind of sends a red flag, you know, immediately. Uh, so try to be flexible, motivated, and make things easy. Uh, rolling your eyes, that was one that I've seen a few times. That's, that's not a good one. Um, so there's, there's quite a few more. As we go through, I'm going to share other, other tips with the interview, and then you can see what's good, and I'll share some uh, best and worst. Um, and then the other part, Maya, that you asked was the good things. Is that right? Yeah, the good things, but then also with employers that, or I'm sorry, employees that you've had for a really long time, are there things yes. that you've seen, like great things that you saw on day one with their interview? So, you know, I can think of a number of people who during the interview impressed me tremendously. Um, and what impressed me was that they seem to embody the spirit of Los Niños, our company mission, our company values. So the whole secret to the interview process is people are looking for a match. So don't be somebody you're not because you don't want somebody to hire you and then say to themselves later on, this is not the person that I hired. So I wouldn't try to be somebody you're not. But um, I mentioned low maintenance, somebody who's a very hard worker, somebody who cares for what we care for. The mission at our company is to be of great service to others. So someone who just says that in a whole bunch of ways through their prior experiences with other employers, that's, that's what we look for. And yes, I've seen that immediately on people. And I can think of people that have been with us for 10 15 years or more. So let's continue. Now, what about on the interview day itself? My recommendation is dress to impress. Now, impress meaning, you know, get dressed up, put a button down shirt, a blouse, if you're a woman, depending on the company. If you're, it varies by industry. So if you're applying for a job in a financial sector, you're not going to be business casual like this. You, for men, you want to have a tie. And just like the, uh, the folks in this picture on the screen, you know, that's the way you're going to want to look. Professional, presentable, uh, ties for men, blouse and jacket for women. So be at the higher end of what you expect the place to be. If it's a startup, maybe they're going to be a lot more relaxed, but I wouldn't go in jeans and so forth. If you really want the job, then get to the location of the interview an hour ahead. Why? Tr trouble with the train, uh, car. What you don't want to do is get there late. And late means you're not there 10 minutes early. 10 minutes early, not to the building you're going to, but you go through security. You get to the floor of the building, or maybe you're going to a campus of a hospital or perhaps a university. There could be many, many buildings. You have to find the right parking. You may have to walk. It could take you half an hour uh, just to find parking and come back. So get there way, way ahead. In some places that hire, if somebody is late for an interview, they don't even interview. They say, I'm sorry. You know, if you're late for an interview, we don't need you at this company. Um, definitely bring paper and pencil and bring a crisp, copy of your resume and cover letter if you have that. Questions on this? Uh, do you have any tips for, you know, waiting <clears throat> to go into the interview or if, you know, I guess like the small talk um, portion before the actual interview starts, like I feel like, you know, is how important is that aspect of the interview, just being able to communicate, not even necessarily about the job? Well, you know, interesting, great question. So first of all, when I say go to the location, you're going to be interviewed an hour ahead. So let's say you're going to a college campus and it's large. So I would go to like a breakfast place or something like that, sit down, have a cup of coffee, 
and uh, then walk over to the exact building right beforehand. In terms of once you arrive at the location, um, it's okay to be friendly, just be professional. Don't tell them your life story, you know, don't tell them, you know, all the, any issues you recently had and just, you know, keep it professional. So you do a little bit of small uh, talk, but my guide, Lucian, would be to follow the interviewers. If they want to talk more personally, go ahead. But if they stop asking you questions, don't go on and on. Then just cut it at that point. Other questions about, you know, preparing for the interview day? Actually, um, I had a question, Dr. Mesh, about the cover letter. What are the attributes of a winning cover letter? Okay, so great question. I'm not going to cover it in great detail right now. However, what I can tell you is that is just one example of all of these points that I'm making. And each one of these points, or most of these points, you can go to Google or uh, let's say YouTube, and you can find YouTubes or essays exactly on that. So in terms of a cover letter, it's covered extensively in YouTube. I would just YouTube it and look for what they say. I'll give you the short answer, which is keep it short and be specific. Be specific. Don't be general. Don't show a cover letter, which is to whom it may concern. I'm interested in your company and something like that. Say, you know, dear hiring manager, if you don't know the name of the person, or HR director, you could probably get the HR director on the website um, if it's a small enough company where that person might be involved. Um, and then, you know, I'm interested in working at Los Nino Services. So that's better yet than at your company, which is general. It shows, you know, you're just sending out a million of these things. Uh, another thing is I'm interested in working at Los Nino Services because of your great culture, I love the work that you do, et cetera, but specifics. So the specifics and short. It could be one paragraph, maybe two. If you're going to have three paragraphs, they better be really short. Absolutely should not be more than one page. Thank you. Okay, so let's, let's uh, talk about right before you go into the interview. You are going to be nervous. Most people are going to be nervous, and that's okay. It's normal. However, try to relax. So it's a really simple idea, but deep breaths can really calm you. Take three or five, you know, slow breaths in, slow breaths out, and then think positive thoughts while you do this. So like, hey, Scott, you've got this. You're a great applicant. Uh, things like that. Um, so to keep it positive and keep yourself on that positive track. Okay. And don't forget to smile. Now, there's a lot of questions that uh, people can ask in interviews. And again, you're going to find just probably hundreds of articles that are written specifically about questions. One of the most important ones to many interviewers is talking about a challenge or a difficult situation. And um, I believe that tells a lot about a person. Uh, when things are going good, you know, that's great. You know, most people are cool when things are fine. But when the going gets tough, the tough get going. So you can talk about a challenge in the following way, the STAR method. So describe the situation, the task that you had responsibility for, the action that you took, and the result. So, for example, um, you know, uh, we had an audit coming up, and I was assigned the task of preparing the files. We had about 200 files that we had to review to make sure all the papers were in order. So we only had two weeks and I wound up, you know, staying late and working with 
other people on the team, but we finished three days early, which was really good for our company. And we passed the audit in flying colors. So you can practice that and you can craft a few of those. You don't want to have things memorized. You don't want to be a robot in an interview, but you want to be familiar with situations and things you might talk about. So it'll make things easier for you as opposed to, uh, 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 now I'll give you another tip, which is when someone asks you a question that you don't feel really prepared to answer rather than blurting anything out, to me, it's a positive. I think to most interviewers, if you say, you know, that's a good question. Let me think about that for just a moment. Yeah. I have this in mind and then you go ahead. So it's okay to take a pause. And I think it's a real positive to most interviewers for people who are honest and straightforward. And, you know, you need a couple of seconds, you need to think about something. It's all right. Again, don't speak too much in generalities. If you use a generality, like I'm a hard worker, um, it's okay to make a generality, however, much stronger yet to follow it up with specifics. So what would you rather hear? I'm a hard worker or I'm a, I'm a really hard worker and I know we're supposed to be at work at nine, but I tend to get there at eight because I don't want to be late and I want to make sure, sure things are done early. And I usually leave, you know, well after five. Uh, you know, my boss tells me I'm, I'm a real hard worker. So the boss is kind of validating the specifics about the hours is only one thing that you can share. But again, uh, specifics. So let's talk about interview behavior. So ask good questions. Absolutely. Like what does success look like in the role? Not that many people have asked me that question. But that's, you know, a very good one because it shows that you're interested in the role and you want a clear understanding of the expectations. Maybe you might want to ask, um, hey, dear interviewer, what is your favorite part of the company? And what is the culture like here? How would you describe it? Those are fine questions. Maintain a positive attitude, um, lean in, eye contact, and try to be concise and complete. If you are too concise, then the interviewer might not understand what you're trying to talk about and they might not get it or they may have to ask you questions, clarifying and follow ups. And then to be complete, you want to be complete. However, you don't want to go beyond that. So if you're complete, then you won't get follow up questions because you'll be very clear. Interviewers really vary. Some interviewers go on and on, ask a whole bunch of follow-up questions. Other interviewers do not. They will ask you the question, that's it. They will note your response and move on. So don't count on the interviewer to, to see whether you're answering too concisely or, you know, you can't really be too complete, but you can be too long. So think of Goldilocks and three bears. So she wanted the porridge that was not too hot and not too cold. You want it just right. And of course, you don't know that for individual interviewers, but be aware, um, people tend to be either too long or too short. So you'll figure that out by looking at yourself when you videotape and just review. You could do it for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. Even two minutes will give you tremendously valuable feedback. And if you're brave, then you do a little more. Some things that you don't want to do. Why don't you want to answer questions that you could figure out on their website? Anybody? Shows that you're unprepared. Shows you're unprepared and you haven't gone to their website. Exactly. You don't want to speak negatively about prior employers. Why? What does that tell somebody about you? It kind of reflects negatively on you, like um, they. Absolutely, I, I don't know the word exactly. I'm, I'm spacing, but yeah, <laughs> yeah it just shows you're not a nice person. 
So negative things do happen. But the issue to the interviewers, the interviewers know that. They know bad things happen. But what do you do about it? How do you take it? And are you a negative person that looks for all the negative things and amplifies it? Or did you try to address something? Maybe it was successful. Maybe it wasn't. And then, you know, are you are you positive? Are you not? So the specific answer really, really matters. I'm thinking about people who have answered the question, you know, tell me about a difficult situation or tell me about uh, a challenging situation with a boss. And some people have answered like, well, it was a little difficult in this last, you know, situation. Oh, really? Tell me what happened. They tell a little, little bit about it. And I'm thinking, my gosh, that was like a horrible thing. Um, and then if it, up, upon request for them to go a little bit more deeply, uh, I was so impressed by that interviewee who dealt with that situation in a, in a very good way. Um, and they were able to handle the situation well enough and basically, you know, move on. It didn't, you know, it didn't sink their ship. You know, they, they just dealt with it and, you know, in a constructive way and they were able to move ahead. Bad things do happen. The issue, issue is how does a person deal with it? Watch your fidgeting. Uh, don't read emails for sure. Check your phone. Uh, watch your attitude. So I'm a New Yorker. New York is the home of attitude. Just try to make yours a good one and not a bad one. And be careful about talking too much or too little. So there's probably a hundred questions that are common questions. You can read these in the Macaulay website and a bunch of others, other videos. Here's a couple of the most common ones to be prepared for. Tell me about yourself. Remember, the answer to this question is not to go back to your early childhood days. It is to tell you a little bit about yourself, but in a professional context. And if somebody asks you, well, what about personally? It's okay if that's what they really want. I would be more concise and I would not go on and on. Uh, what are you most proud of? That's an easy one for most of us. Strengths is usually easy, but then weaknesses can be tough. And sometimes because people don't like to admit their weaknesses. However, for most interviewers, though, I think they will tell you that Somebody who can admit a weakness is a strength because if you're not aware of and if you cannot admit your weaknesses, then you're going to have a hard time learning and growing and becoming stronger and avoiding that weakness in the future. Tell me about a challenge. We just went over that. That one's important. And also about a mistake or failure. Uh, folks that have answered this question with, Oh, I really can't think of anything. That does not seem honest. And that seems like uh, they just don't feel comfortable admitting or, or sharing. And that to me and to many interviewers is a red flag. Uh, talking about your ideal job, that's important. And then hopefully the job that you're applying for today will be similar to your ideal job. Uh, so that the interviewer gets the understanding that, yeah, you're in the right place. Uh, it may not be a hundred percent exactly the same, but it'll be similar. And also, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? Which tells the interviewer basically, are you looking for work in the financial area and you're applying to a financial uh, company? Or do you want to become a social worker? Uh, I remember many years ago, uh, I was working with a financial person, and when I asked about what this person would like to do in the future, uh, this person mentioned, like, social work. So I thought, this person is not going to be in this role for very long, so that wasn't really a great match. Uh, what questions do you have so far on this? If your, you know, ideal job in five to ten years is very different from the one that you're applying for right now, how do you suggest handling that question? I, I would be really thoughtful about it. 
um, you know, how, how much do you really want to share? Now, if you're working in a fast food place, they're not expecting you to work there for a long time. And they probably wouldn't ask you that question where you expect to be in five to 10 years. But um, so it wouldn't really matter. But if there is a job that's more of a career kind of a job, then I would, you know, hopefully the job you're applying to would lead to it. Now that, that brings me to another point. So that's, that's a, an important question, Lucian. If they ask you to describe your experience. Now I've hired many people who are right out of college and this is their first professional job and they're going to be working with families. Now, people who are graduating college may not necessarily have work in mental health, social services. So how do they answer that question? Um, so when I asked about their strengths, their weaknesses, their successes, any failures, I remember this one woman who I interviewed, and she was most proud of working at Kmart because she sold hot dogs and she happened to sell the most hot dogs of anybody at Kmart. So I love that. And I thought, now we're in social services. What the heck does that have to do with working with families? It has a lot to do with working families because she had to deal with customers. Customers had needs and wants. They had complaints about the hot dogs. They were overcooked or undercooked. So she had to handle that. And when she talked about how she handled the customers, it was clear to me that she was a pro at working with people. And she turned out to be a fantastic hire. So the exact work that you have to do doesn't have to be exactly the same as what you're going to do next. However, the elements of what you've done in prior jobs, hopefully will carry over. So if the future job is customer service, you could be selling shoes, you could be selling hot dogs. You know, you don't have to work in social services necessarily get a job in social services. And you yourself can think of the parallels and how a specific uh, skill or task, something that you've done could generalize. Other questions about this? Okay, well, let's talk about the phone screening interview. So the phone screening interview, uh, often once you submit your resume, uh, someone will call and they might talk to you for five, 10, 15 minutes to screen you, which means to determine, hey, are you in the ballpark? And should we spend our resources in the company to have a full interview? So I would try whenever possible, if it's scheduled, to be in a quiet location. You know, hopefully you'll charge your phone or you have it plugged in. Uh, you want to be straightforward, be honest, talk slowly, clearly, so people can hear you and prepare for it like it was a, a real interview, even if it's just by phone. So if possible, put on a, a blouse, a jacket, um, get yourself prepared so that you feel like you're working and that will come across. The video interview. Definitely recommend using a laptop instead of a phone. The reason is uh, it will take uh, probably a better picture. And you'll be able to see the interviewer better, especially if there's any materials they want to share on, on screen. Um, absolutely early is on time. So log on around five minutes early. Um, get a good location. Check out the visual and, and the sound. And lighting is a really simple thing. But you know that there's tiny little lights, like half the size of a cell phone that go right on a laptop and they're like 20, 30, 40 bucks max. So you can purchase one, just plug it into your laptop, and make sure that you have light on your face. Um, neutral background, now is not the time to be uh, showing people, you know, uh, all of your personal uh, nature. Uh, 
you know, I would, I would recommend you being a little more neutral and uh, be thoughtful about what's behind you. You don't want to have the wet towel, you know, from the shower you just took or personal items and certainly uh, have a good internet connection. So I have in all of the people that I've hired and interviewed, I mean, hundreds of people, I've gotten maybe a dozen, maybe two dozen max handwritten thank you notes over the years. If you really want to stand out, just a quick little note, could be a sentence or two. Thank you so much for the interview. I'm really eager uh, to hear from you. I would love to work for your company. Uh, you will stand out. And it's amazing how many people have references. And then when I go to call the references, the references was not apprised that they would be called. So make sure that the references know to expect a phone call. So in addition, there's tremendous uh, resources. Here's some right here. And happy to hear what you thought of this presentation. You can email me, info at .com, and certainly tell the Macaulay Career Center uh, staff. So um, we have time for a few questions and uh, be delighted to answer any questions that you might have. What's your favorite part of the interviewing process? I just love getting to know people. Uh, so I happen to love interviews. I happen to love meeting people. I love hearing their story. And it, to me, uh, yes, I'm a psychologist. So <laughs> I just love getting to know people. So just the whole process of learning their story, uh, how they've learned, grown over the years, why they choose what they're doing, and especially how people overcome adversity and learn from it. I am open to questions. What do you think? How did, was there a few valuable tips, anything you didn't know here? I think the handwritten note was valuable. I actually didn't know to do that. I thought you could just send them a letter or like a thank you email. So I'm definitely going to use that tip. Fernanda, absolutely do uh, an email. I would probably do that immediately. And maybe in addition, if you're really interested in the company, then, you know, absolutely. You will really stand out. Thank you. Daniel, you were going to ask? Yes, I was actually going to say exactly what Fernanda said about using a handwritten note. Um, is that still preferred over the email, like in a pandemic era? I wouldn't recommend instead of, I would do it in addition. Oh. Uh, probably that day, I would email whoever your contact is and thank them for the interview. And then um, who writes things by hand anymore? Nobody. So by doing so, you'll really stand out. And I can think about some of the people that I hired many, many years ago that are still with us. They wrote a handwritten thank you. That's really sweet. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips for, you know, I know it can be tough sometimes to like keep applying for jobs and, you know, not um, even getting to the interview stage. Do you have any tips for distinguishing between, oh, uh, am I applying for a competitive job or am I doing something wrong within my cover letter or resume? Uh, fantastic question. This is a really important one because there are a number of people, especially now pandemic, it's very difficult to be hired. So people can doubt themselves. So the question is fine. Am I doing something wrong? And then the question is, what do you do with it? Rather than spiraling into like, you know, anxiety or depression, my recommendation is to take your question and ask somebody who can give you good feedback. So somebody from a career center, uh, maybe a friend or colleague that's in the field, 
um, that would, you know, somebody in your field is going to give you the best feedback. Um, like, hey, what do you think? Uh, well, it's good, Lucian, but you know something? You might want to change this or you might want to change that. So some people don't want to hurt your feelings, but if you uh, just ask them nicely, um, and if they say, oh, it looks okay, uh, then they're not really answering your question. So I would follow up. So, oh, thank you so much for that. What do you think I might do to improve it? That is the power question. Because when you ask how it is, most people are going to go okay because they don't want to hurt your feelings. So then I would just take uh, those follow-ups. Um, certainly, career counseling people would be very, very good people to do that. So other comments, questions, anything I can do to help? So I want to tell you guys, you've been a great audience. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I wish you all the best in your career and your interviewing process. Try to do as many of the tips as possible because getting your dream job is like what my eighth grade basketball coach told me. He said, basketball is a game of percentages. The closer you are to the basket, the higher the percentage will be that you'll get it in. Think about the tips. I gave you 50 today. The more you do, the more likely it'll be that you will get your dream job. Thank you so much.